What's going on guys? It's Corey from Super Comic Guru 9000 and uh, I do have kind of a different video for you guys today. Um, you know, we love anime. That's like our chief thing we talk about. Uh, but a few times uh, we brought up some other subjects. We talked about movies, video games. But now I want to talk about one that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. Uh, something that I consider the holy grail of my childhood, so to speak. Um, now, I love anime, I like manga, but I've always been kind of a casual comic book fan. You know, I like American comics, and I like what they've done and how they've influenced a lot of things, but I've never really been a huge collector. I don't have maybe but four books in my entire collection, uh, but I finally just added one, which I consider to be my absolute favorite American comic book of all time, and it's actually a re-release of a really, really big classic, and it's something that's very near and dear to me as a child. It is here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one color classics. This right here is the very first issue in the origin story of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is a comic book from 1984, originally done by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, and this is the thing that started it all. Way before the cartoon, this is where it got started, and this is just a book that I have wanted to own for the longest time, and uh, when it was originally printed, this was done in a black and white format, in an almost magazine format. It was huge and it was blown up, and there were very, very few copies that were given, so the original book itself is disgustingly rare and frankly I just don't want to shell out thousands of books for this. Did you catch that subtle hint? Shell out? Anywho, the point is this book is uh, another reissue uh, and uh, you know I missed a lot of the older reissues. Uh, what's cool about this one is it is done in a brand new color format. They've remastered it or they've made it look a little bit cleaner and uh, this is just the quintessential Ninja Turtle story and uh, if I may I'm actually gonna give a shout out to a, a very famous uh, anime, not, an and if I could, I just want to give a shout out to a very famous internet reviewer, uh, James Rolfe, probably more popularly known as the Angry Video Game Nerd. Uh, last summer, uh, in 2011, he did a whole summer of Ninja Turtles videos, and he actually did a whole video, uh, about the Ninja Turtle comics, these ones right here, that were done by, uh, Mirage Studios, and, uh, one thing that he quoted, which I really thought was cool, is, uh, this is the quintessential turtle story. If you wanted to know what the Ninja Turtles were about, I'd say, here, read this. And uh, that's exactly what he said, and uh, I completely agree with him. This is my favorite turtle story ever, and uh, it's just, it's nothing like what you'd expect if you grew up with a cartoon. Alright guys, before I actually talk about the very first issue of the comic, I just want to give you guys sort of my personal history with the Ninja Turtles and how they've actually affected my life in a lot of ways and uh, just give you sort of my thoughts on uh, what happened in the past and what I'm looking forward to in the future and some things that I'm a little apprehensive about. But uh, first and foremost, uh, like uh, most kids in the late 80s, early 90s, I was exposed to the Ninja Turtles through the very popular uh, cartoon show, which, uh, you know, I barely remember a lot of it. I do remember the very first six episodes because those are the ones they released on VHS that a lot of us had at the time. And uh, those were easily the most memorable episodes of the series. That's when, of course, you got introduced to the main characters. Uh, you got Leonardo, the leader, Donatello, who does machines. Raphael, he's cool but rude. And Michelangelo, he's a party dude. And, uh, you know, this is the Ninja Turtles that we grew up with, the ones that we're most familiar with. And uh, oddly enough, they're nothing like the comics they came from, aside from the fact that they are mutant turtles and they are ninjas. Uh, the, the television version was uh, much more lighthearted, obviously, because it was geared towards kids and they had action figures to sell, which were freaking awesome, by the way. I almost wish that I uh, actually hadn't sold a lot of mine uh, when I was younger. My mom actually, of course, gave them a lot of them away when I was younger. Uh, but, you know, I don't know what I would do with them now. But, uh, you know, if I ever had, like, uh, kids later, I'd love for them to just, you know, have them. But, uh, anywho, uh, the, the Turtles were just, like, a cultural phenomenon at the time. You know, they were everywhere. Cartoons... TV, music, food, toys, clothing, it was just huge. And you know what's funny? They've sort of been off and on ever since, and yet they're still as uh, relevant as they were when they uh, were first introduced. There's just so many iterations of them. And uh, one of the biggest things for me was seeing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie in 1990. Uh, I remember uh, vividly, it was one of the first big movies that I actually went to as a kid. You know, I was still very young at the time, and uh, you know, well, what I didn't expect about that movie was uh, how dark it was going to be. It was actually much closer to this comic right here, uh, which I'll get into a little more detail later. Um, but there's a lot of homages seen in that, and it's very different from the cartoon. The only thing it really has in common is some of the turtles' personalities are a little more like they are in the cartoon. And, uh, of course, they have their colored bandanas, which, if you haven't already noticed from the cover here, all the turtles have red bandanas, and that's because in the original Mirage comics, 
they all wear red bandanas. It's just sort of their thing. And uh, they only introduce that into the cartoon, which, you know, I don't hate that. I really don't, actually. I think that's great for their personalities, and it's really made them cultural icons because of those colors. You know, when you think of the Ninja Turtles, you think of blue, orange, red, and purple. But uh, still, that's just the way it is. But, uh, you know, the, the first Ninja Turtle movie, again, I still actually think that's one of the best comic book movies ever made. And I, I stand by that even more now after reading this very first comic. It's almost perfectly faithful with a few things sprinkled in that are new and a few things taken from some of the later comics. But, uh, you know, the, the Ninja Turtles are huge, you know. If you want to see some really, really great reviews of those movies, again, watch James Rolfe's reviews. They are just absolutely funny, especially when he gets to Ninja Turtles 3, which he literally cuts that fucking movie in half with a sword. It's, it's completely hilarious. Um, and, you know, I can't really say anything that hasn't been said about that movie before. I can't do it any justice. Um, and then, of course, there is the future, which is coming with brand new Ninja Turtle content. There's not only a brand new movie that's in development, but there's also a brand new animated series that is in development as well that's going to be airing on Nickelodeon this fall. Um, obviously, it's not really meant for my demographic, but, you know, I'm still probably just going to watch it anyway because I just have to see it. Uh, this is going to be the next show that came after the 2003 series, which... I thought it was okay. I didn't really care for it that much, though, but that's because I was sort of jaded about it. I was like, oh, the only turtles are the cartoon turtles from 1987. But, uh, you know, after reading this comic, which I'm about to get into, uh, this is really the definitive turtles. But uh, if there's one more thing I just want to address, this has obviously been the hot button for turtles stuff uh, going on lately. Uh, Michael Bay and his studio are getting ready to work on a brand new Ninja Turtles movie, which is going to have a very controversial and uh, brand new origin for the characters. And, uh, you know, obviously they're the teenage mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, you know, so they're teenagers, they're mutants. Uh, Michael Bay has decided to make them aliens, which sort of destroys their entire backstory altogether. Now, I'm only saying that because Michael Bay hasn't uh, given us any more information. He's only told us that they're aliens, so at this point I'm just going to say that's pretty shitty. That's not a, you know, good thing they're doing here. Because it sort of destroys their entire backstory altogether. How are they going to interact with Splinter? How are they going to do all this other stuff? How's the Shredder going to be involved? Why are there turtles on another freaking planet that know ninjinsu that are named after Renaissance painters? None of it really adds up. And I don't know how he's going to make that work in this brand new movie. And, you know, the only reason I'm so apprehensive is because of what he's done to Transformers, which... To me, is not as much of a sacred cow as I considered Ninja Turtles, but it still gives me a lot of disappointment to think, oh god, he ruined Optimus Prime, what's he going to do to my freaking four favorite characters from my uh, childhood? So, uh, you know, I'm apprehensive. You know, I think I should be. Transformers was a big warning. Uh, but, you know, until we see some actual footage of this brand new movie, it could be a masterpiece. Who knows? This could be the greatest fucking Turtle movie ever made. As far as I'm concerned, though, the only Turtle movie is the one that came out in 1990. Uh, you know, I still think it's entertaining today. So when that movie comes out, I'm probably just going to stay home, read this comic, and watch that movie. All right, guys, now that I've talked your head off about sort of my little history of the Ninja Turtles, let's go ahead and talk about this comic right here, the very first issue. Uh, first few more things, like I said earlier, this is a reissuing of the original 1984 classic, now redone in color, re-released by IDW Publishing who uh, also right now are also releasing a brand new story of the Ninja Turtles. You guys should probably check that out too. Um, but if you thought you knew the origins of the Turtles from the cartoons and the movies, you're kind of there, but this is a little different. This is actually a really interesting story because when you think of the Ninja Turtles, your first thought is they're the heroes in a half shell. Hence, they're heroes. They're heroic. This is actually a story of pure and bloody... <clears throat> this is actually a story of pure and bloody revenge. And it's actually really intense and filled with a lot of great action. But uh, this is where you're going to get the origins of the Turtles. But the actual comic itself uh, starts out really, really cool with the uh, Turtles. They're in the middle of this alley and they're getting attacked by this gang. And this is the very first time they've actually been allowed to go out onto the surface and uh, test their abilities. And they go up against this gang that thinks they're just going to beat the crap out of them. And they think they're just some crazy guys in costumes. But of course not. They're Turtles. They're ninjas. And they jump up and they beat the living crap out of these guys. And they straight up, like, stab and kill them and everything. Like, they don't give a shit. There's, there's no prejudice here. And they take all these guys out. And before the cops can even get there, 
they, of course, go into the explanation that, of course, they're ninjas, so they're able to escape really, really quick. And uh, there, there's one panel in here where they say uh, they strike hard and fade away into the night. And I think that's just really, really badass. And they, of course, escape away into the sewers. And this is, of course, where we're introduced to their master, Master Splinter, who, like in the cartoon and like in the movies, is a mutated rat. And, uh, you know, like the movie version, it's very similar. We get to learn that originally, 20 years before the story began, uh, Splinter was a pet rat living with his master, Hamato Yoshi, and uh, Hamato Yoshi was a ninja in the Foot Clan, and he was one of their most renowned, most powerful ninja, and uh, he had a rival by the name of Oroko Nagi, and uh, he and Nagi, they competed in a lot of different things, but uh, mostly they competed for the love of this woman named Tang Shen, and uh, this eventually resulted in uh, Oroko Nagi finding Tang Shen, and basically just beating the living shit out of her, basically saying, you, you be my lover, that's it, or you're gonna die. And uh, while this is happening, eventually Yoshi finds this, and uh, he just freaks out when he sees this. So he just walks up, and it's mostly implied in the book, but he fucking kills Nagi right there. You see his fists are covered in blood. And uh, because he kills him, he is, of course, ejected from the Foot Clan, and uh, both him and Tang Shen flee to America. Now, while that's going on, we can see that uh, Oroku Saki, who is the brother of Nagi, is just a young boy at the time, and he is just pissed off. He's filled with hate and revenge, and he wants to get revenge for his brother Nagi. So he trains, and over the years, he becomes one of the most renowned ninja in the Foot Clan, and eventually becomes the Shredder. And you don't really get to get a good look at him at first. It's mostly silhouetted images, but you can tell by looking at it, this is the classic Shredder that we all know and love. And eventually, over time, the Shredder becomes such a renowned ninja that the Foot Clan make him the head of the Foot Clan branch in New York. So he goes to New York, and lucky for him, this just happens to be the place that Yoshi and Tang Shen fled to, and uh, this is where he makes his move. You can see that the Shredder actually sneaks into their apartment and kills them both in cold blood, leaving uh, Yoshi's pet Splinter there to witness the entire thing. And uh, during the uh, struggle, Splinter somehow escapes and makes his way into the sewers. We then cut away two years later, and we get to see that there's this weird accident that takes place. Up on the streets, there is this crazy convoluted thing where there's this huge truck driving by, and there's this blind man crossing the street. If you've read any other Marvel comics, this is probably starting to sound very familiar. Uh, before he gets hit, he's pushed out of the way, and this big canister of green ooze comes out of the back of the truck, and then it bounces over to this kid who happens to be holding this little bowl filled with four baby turtles, and it knocks the bowl into the sewage drain, and all the goo gets down there, and it covers all the turtles, and Splinter sees this, and he immediately gets covered in it as well, and all of a sudden, he's starting to become much smarter and much more intelligent, and he's able to gather up the baby turtles, and eventually, overnight, they all start to grow and become larger and more intelligent, and uh, Splinter, being the older one, takes on the form of the father. And uh, eventually, he actually starts raising these mutated turtles to become his disciples. And since he watched his master train in martial arts, he knows how to use these as well. And he trades this off to the turtles, and he basically makes them his ninja disciples. And over the course of 13 years, he's been training them to become perfect ninja so that they could carry out his bloody revenge mission to eventually meet and kill the Shredder. The rest of the comic is almost pure action and a lot of really, really great classic artwork. The next part of the story is actually great. You get to see a lot of development from Raphael, who's really the only turtle in the first issue who gets a little development and not really much at all at the same time. Basically, Splinter sends him out on this mission to uh, give the Shredder a notice that, hey, you need to meet my turtles and you're going to fight them. And uh, this is just badass because it's just Raphael sneaking into the Foot Clan's uh, secret hideout and throwing his scythe through a window right at the Shredder's head with a note attached to it. And it's just like, come and get us, bitch. And the Shredder's like, okay. So the rest of the issue is just the turtles going out onto this rooftop where they're going to meet the Shredder. And of course the Shredder obliges. And of course he's freaked out because he's like, what the hell are those things? Uh, he has no idea what they are, and he immediately confronts them, and he has the entire Foot Clan join him, and that's when this huge, just epic battle, con uh, and that's when this huge, epic battle just begins between the Ninja Turtles and the Foot Clan, and they're all using their weapons in really cool different ways. They're all teaming up and fighting against them, and there's even this one great, huge uh, double page of uh, them fighting against the Foot Ninja. And eventually the Turtles do come over top and uh, they defeat all of these Ninja. And it's time for the big confrontation between Shredder. And Shredder's just a pompous ass at first. He's just like, come up me one at a time or all at once. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be the last one living. 
And uh, at first they do do the one-on-one -on -one thing, kind of like how they translated that into the movies. And then eventually you, they can see that the Shredder's just beating the crap out of them at first. And uh, then Leonardo's like, you know what? Fuck it. Everybody just surround him and attack him from a distance. And they all just start throwing shuriken at him. And uh, Raphael throws his size at him and then ends up just running underneath him and just kicking the crap out of him. Uh, he gets, like, his back broken by Donatello's uh, bow staff. And then Leonardo just walks right up to him and just impales him right through. It is just completely badass. Now, the Shredder should be dead by this, and it almost seems like the Shredder wants to be killed at this point. But the Turtles are not dogs without honor. They decide not to kill him. Leonardo instead decides to hand his sword to the Shredder, and he asks him to commit seppuku, which, of course, is the samurai or uh, ninja, like, suicide technique. And the Shredder's like, fuck that shit, and he pulls out a grenade, and he's getting ready to, like, take all of them out. And Donatello's like, fuck you, and he throws his bow staff right at him, and it hits the Shredder right in the face, and it, like, breaks his jaw. And then he falls over the side of this building and just explodes in midair. This was the second-to-last page of the comic, so this was just brimming with some ridiculous excitement. And that's it. The Shredder has been defeated. The Shredder is the most, like, popular, most famous Ninja Turtle villain, and he gets offed in the very first issue. Really, really hilarious at the same time as it is badass. But uh, the uh, end of the book is the uh, Turtles going down, and they can see the remains of the Shredder all over the place. And, uh, you know, they're like, we finally did it. We have avenged our master's master. We're the shit. And, uh, and then it ends with all of them standing triumphantly, ending and walking out of the alleyway with uh, their awesome, awesome saying, we strike hard and fade We strike hard and fade away into the night. So this was just the definitive, most gritty turtle comic that I have ever read, and I love it. I think it's great. It's uh, really a testament to how uh, good the story is, considering that this is like 26 years old this is an old story and it still really holds up and uh because it's been redone in color obviously you know it just it looks that much better and if you guys are interested to see how it really looks uh there are a few previews of it of uh, the first couple pages and uh, i'll just show you one just to kind of show you how the uh, coloring actually looks now you can actually see here here's a great shot right here of all the turtles uh, doing some pretty epic poses and you can see the coloring is uh, really nice. It's not overdone and uh, you know, it's it's great how well it holds up You know, this is this really is the definitive turtle story and uh, it really shocked me by how good it was uh, It just came out yesterday and uh, apparently they're going to be publishing all of the old issues and reprinting them in color So you guys need to make sure and check those out if uh, you're interested try and find a real comic book shop to purchase them at because there's only so many comic book shops nowadays, and I just happen to be really lucky to live five minutes from one. And uh, there's nothing cooler than going to your local bookshop and just finding something like this. Um, so this is a quintessential piece of my childhood, one that I've wanted to have for years. You know, some people have their Superman number one, their Spider-Man or their Batman number one. I have my Ninja Turtles. I am completely satisfied. I love it. I cannot wait to read some of the other issues because I didn't get to grow up with a comic. So this, this is like something brand new for me but at the same time it is the pure essence of the ninja turtles and uh again this is not the cartoon turtles this is gritty this is violent this is dark this is probably not what you're used to the turtles themselves they're not joking all the time they do have a few smart ass puns but they're really nothing like their cartoon counterparts except maybe Raphael. so uh if you guys are looking for a brand new updated version of the original turtles make sure and check out idw publishing's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Color Classics, the brand new colored versions of the comics, great for old turtle fans, even better for newer ones who are trying to get into the series. This is the shit right here. We talk about Naruto ninjas all the time, and I love Naruto, but as far as I'm concerned, these are the real ninjas. So I've sort of poured my heart out as my uh, old school turtle fan stuff goes, but what about you guys? Did you guys grow up with this? Do you have any specific turtle memories you'd like to uh, let us know about? And I I'd love to hear them. You can let us know your comments below. And I also have one important question. Who is your favorite Ninja Turtle? Is it Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, or Raphael? You can let me know with your comments below. So remember guys, if you liked this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, something a little different, let us know what you thought about it with your comments below.